I wouldn't call myself a, like a straight thrill seeker because I don't think I'm much of a risk taker actually. I'm a risk mitigator. I'm not foolhardy about it. I'm really making, you know, it's really well planned. So I'm Kate Leaving and I'm planning to cycle across the Antarctic continent at the end of this year. And if I'm successful, I'll be the first person to cycle across Antarctica. It's an 1800 kilometre journey. There's a very short window in Antarctica to do it in the summer, so it has to be December, January pretty much. The kind of things that, that could go wrong, I mean obviously the Antarctic weather isn't that predictable. So yes, if there's a storm you can just hang tight for about three days. They tend to last for three days maximum. You know, there are crevasses, but we kind of also know where the main ones are and we'll, we're planning to avoid those crevasse fields. The first thing I really had to do was uh, work out whether, whether you know, I'm capable of dealing with the extreme cold and whether the bike's capable of dealing with the extreme cold. So what's special about this bike is that it's the very first two-wheel drive or all-wheel drive fat bike. And what that means is that um, you can drive the front wheel as well as the back wheel. And there's a system opposite the drivetrain on the rear wheel. Uh, there's a, there's a specialised uh, gear and that drives a rod that runs directly um, towards the head tube at the front of the bike, crosses over and then drives a rod that runs parallel to the fork at the front and then drives the front wheel. It's very clever because it has a little clutch so I can actually switch it on and off. So if I don't need to use the two-wheel drive system, I can switch it off. So this is just a normal, as a normal bicycle would drive from the rear wheel. And then if I turn the clutch on, engage the front wheel, now what you can see is both wheels are driving at the same time. The most important thing is not actually the two-wheel drive system, it's the flotation of the tyres. Um, you need to have as large a con what's called a contact patch on the snow. So in other words, as much of the tyre as possible touching the snow or the ice to get as much grip, grip to go forwards. So the tyres themselves are 12 centimetres or five inches wide. And I take everything off my bikes that can break and, and, and break down. We want the, you know, the strongest bike possible. Perhaps the most defining uh, quality that you need to be able to do a journey like this is actually mental strength. So now with all the other experiences that I've had, cycling you know, the equivalent of twice around the world at the equator, um, across Russia, uh, 25,000 k's through Australia, across Africa, um, I'm ready to go to the next level. I guess when times are really tough, the most important thing is to be really sure of the mission in the first place, To be, if you really believe in what you're doing and why you're doing it. I switch back to that to think, you know, look at the big picture, this is an amazing, you know, it's an amazing privilege to be able to do this stuff. So that's the first thing. Then, you know, I look back and then I compartmentalise right down to thinking about, you know, what's around me, just focusing on maybe getting to, through the next hour. You can really consciously look for the beauty in your surroundings. And if you do that, it's a very positive way of thinking and it's just that's what gets me through.